All right, Mike, here's your first trip update. After five and a half hours of driving, we've arrived at our first campsite. It's uh, pretty isolated from everybody else. But it's also, up, Mike? it's also nothing special. So, this is our first day of paddling. We got one more portage left. And it's straight up. So this is our first real backcountry campsite of the trip on Cochon Lake. It's actually a horrible campsite, but believe it or not, it's the best one we found. Mark got his hammock way in the back behind those trees. My hammock's the one hanging off the cliff here. And the bathroom is way up this hill. This is Erable Lake. This is day two. And this is our campsite. It's really nice, secluded area from the lake. Took, uh, I don't know, about eight hours today. Five and a half kilometers of portage, a little bit of paddling. Hammocks in the back over there, and Mark's nestled in the little tent area. So, day three is in the books. Another five and a half kilometers of portaging in non stop rain all day long. Here's our little shanty town when we arrived at Nadine Lake. It was uh, still raining, it's uh, stopped now for a bit. And there's Mark's setup. I'm behind Mark's poncho, which is drying. And it's actually a nice campsite, except for the access is a little bit steep. So day four of backcountry has come to an end. And as you can tell by all the shit hanging from our clothesline, it's another wet day. Highlights of the day included rain, threats of thunderstorms, Large waves, paddling across a lake with two inexperienced canoeists that shouldn't be paddling across the middle of a lake and huge waves. 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 <laughs> but, oh, the other highlight is paddling all of Burnt Root Lake, looking for one decent campsite. And of course, all the campsites were already occupied. That looked halfway decent. But we're making do with this crappy one. We're here for two days so we can finally relax. And that's about it. So, day six or something, we're on our way to Big Trout, and this is where our portage starts. The problem is, we were coming from that direction. Water's a little high. 
pretty much impossible to get here. So we got off on the bank over there and bushwhacked through the woods. So we have returned to the scene of the crime. This here, though it doesn't have the sandy beach it once had, is where our precious kayak yoke was stolen. This is the 300 meter into Big Trout from Longer Lake, where we were robbed. The woods have been searched. It is not here. I apologize if uh, the wind is unbearable on this one. It's hard to tell. But welcome to our Big Trout campsite. This is like Big Trout. And we have a beautiful campsite this time. Nice rock, rocky entrance. Opens up up top. There's a main fire pit area that we're not using right now because it's a little windy. So we set up some uh, tarps for our usual little shanty town, a gear bomb. Mark with his uh, custom pipe. All of our stuff all over the place. Lots of hammock opportunities on this site. Mark set up back there. Here's my setup. Kind of set up the tarp on an angle so that this side blocks the wind. And you come in and into the hammock. So it's been a couple days since the last update. Uh, right now we're both hunkered down under our tarps. There's a thunderstorm running through. Uh, let's see. When we got to Big Trout a couple days ago in the evening, uh, caught a few uh, lake trout from shore. Uh, nothing else much happened that night. So their second day on Big Trout was our big fishing day. Uh, we went down to the dam, but uh, the fish weren't, they were there, but they just weren't biting very much. I got a, a rainbow trout, but we decided to, uh, we, we went in the morning, we decided to go back to our campsite. And of course, as soon as we decided to go back, huge winds picked up and it was a real hard paddle back. And we ended up being, uh, being basically stuck behind a tarp uh, on our campsite all day uh, yesterday so it made for a pretty shitty second day on Big Trout so today we uh, had a decent sized day but we decided to make it a big day we uh, basically did half of Algonquin today in one day and luckily we found this campsite when we did because the skies opened up basically an hour after we got here 
I'm basically just pushed up against my hammock right now under the tarp. Um, so today too the winds were insane but luckily they were helping us most of the time but it made for some uh, sketchy canoeing conditions. What? I'm filming! <laughs> and uh, that's about it. So we're gonna wait out this thunderstorm, have some supper, go to bed, and another big day tomorrow. So this will probably be the last update of the trip. Uh, we're on Radiant Lake right now. And uh, we found a decent campsite that we were extremely happy to find. Uh, we've pretty much had every kind of weather you can imagine. Uh, yesterday it was 28 degrees Celsius and this morning it was 1 degree Celsius. Uh, the last four days, three or four days have been incredible wind. Um, this site is the closest site to our way out tomorrow. We have a pretty long day tomorrow. Uh, paddling against the current, against the wind, and portaging up hills. So uh, we wanted to be as close as possible. Um, there's a lot of wind on this campsite, which is why you can see I'm set up with the tarp completely low and the doors completely shut. But uh, like I said, we were very happy to get this site. Some people were actually on it when we went past it. And I guess they were just taking a break because we saw them leave when we took a wrong turn. Uh, we were able to grab it instead of paddling against the wind for another hour searching for another site.